So we are still in the chapter of Adhan and we have mentioned many things of the Adhan and so what we are going to read now is يعني, It is acceptable for a child who is Mumayyiz يعني, to call the Adhan no. This uh, Mumayyiz means a child that is able to um, distinguish between good and bad no. And then he says and a big gap in between Adhan and Iqama nullifies it as it as does the performance of Haram acts. He says, يعني فصل كثير ويسير ويسير محرم ويسير محرم. So he says, and that which nullifies it is فصل كثير. يعني which means a large gap. What is a large gap? Which we know is a large gap and which gives the impression that the Adhan is no longer one whole. Um, so, for example, if I were to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, please go slow. Allahu Akbar, no problem. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Who do you think is going to win? Real Madrid or. I think so. Okay. Allahu Akbar, too long. And also because it was not necessary. So, meaning that if the gap is to say something which is required, or even they say, talk which is not necessary as long as the gap is not long so even if you were to ask somebody how is your mother doing how's your father doing that would be okay so that's what people don't understand they would think that it would annul the adhan so it doesn't but it doesn't mean that you should do it on purpose either like okay now that i know that it's permissible you do the adhan for example uh, i know it's permissible let us talk a bit just to show the people that it's halal but so saying a haram word nullifies the adhan immediately even if there is no gap there's always a gap between Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar and the second one so if you would use that gap to gossip to slander to say something haram then your adhan has to this uh, nullifies your adhan and you will have to start all over again does that make sense? and then he says وَلَا يُجْزِمُ قَبْلَ الْوَقْتِ إِلَى الْفَجْرَ بَعْدَ نِصْفِ الْلَيْلِ it is not permissible before the prayer time is due except for Fajr, which can be called for after midnight. So that is uh, the second thing. So if you make the Adhan before the entering of the time, then you have to do the Adhan again. Uh, so and that means the first words of the Adhan. So if you do your Adhan too early and you say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and now the time enters, you have to start again. Um, because the, the Adhan is is an indication that the prayer time has entered. Yes. What about the um, for Friday, if you do two Adhans and the first one is done before Dhuhr That's okay. begins? That's because okay. Friday is different. Because Friday we don't pray Dhuhr. You see, Friday is not the Dhuhr prayer. You see, so that's okay. Now, and also, for example, here they say that Salat al Jama'ah is at 8. Well, if you make your Adhan at 10 to 8, uh, 20 to 8, all of that is good because it's after the Isha time. Okay? Um, for Fajr, he says, yani, it can be called for after midnight. So, after midnight, you are allowed to make the Adhan of Fajr, but there will be two Adhans for Fajr, which is the, the Adhan, the first Adhan, which would be to wake up the people and to give them the time to wake up and prepare themselves. And then you have the second Adhan. And also for the fasting, no? so that people know like, okay, I can still eat a little bit, but soon it will be finished. No. And then he says, it is a sunnah to sit for a while after the Adhan of Maghrib. No? It is a sunnah to sit after the Adhan of Maghrib. And then we ask, what is the gap between the Adhan and the Iqama no? for Maghrib? Uh, we say that this is based on the needs of the masses. If they con congregate early for the prayer, then the gap may be lesser than when they arrive late at the masjid for prayer. Um, so after Maghrib, yani, um, one, one sits down for a little while, allowing the people to enter into the mosque and then uh, perform the iqama, but not too long, because the Maghrib prayer is one of these prayers that has to be prayed quickly. Now, I'm not meaning the prayer itself, but should be prayed soon after the prayer time entry. Does that make sense? 
And then he says, وَمَنْ جَمَعَ أَوْ قَضَى فَوَائِثَ أَذَّنَ لِلْأُولَى ثُمَّ أَقَامَ لِكُلِّ فَرِيضًا Then he says, and whoever combines prayers or prays missed prayers in succession should make the adhan for the first and iqama alone would suffice for the rest. So if you, um, you join your prayers when you're a traveler, for example, then you are going to make adhan for the first and you are going to do iqama for both. And that would be the same with the prayers that you have to make up from the past or from the far past or the near past and you're just going... For example, you have to make up five prayers, you're going to do one adhan and five iqamas. So that, that, that's it really. So that's easy. So now we came to the chapter of the conditions of the prayer. Shurutuha qablaha. Yani which are the, 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 condition that, the conditions that exist before prayer until its completion. So he says, Minha al waqtu wa taharatu min al hadathi wa najas. So he says, So the first thing he starts with now are the prayer times. And so he says, It is the entering of the prayer time and it is being free or the purification from impurities and najasa. So before you pray, there are two things that you have to do. It is to be sure that you are free from impurity and that also that you are in a state of what? Of ritual purity, which is the wudu. So now, as for the impurities, they are the impurities that were defined by the Sharia to be impure. Now, like blood, for example, like urine and so forth, the other things. So, the, before we pray, we need to ensure that three things are pure from impurities. Three things are pure from, imp from impurities. And these three things, they are the body, not meaning the wudu, the wudu, we're talking about impurities. The body, the clothes we are wearing, and the space where we pray. All of these three have to be pure. If one of them is not pure, then that can lead to the your prayer being invalid. Now, because الطَّهَارَةُ مِنَ الْأَحْدَاثِ رَفْعُ الْحَدَثِ Removing the impurities, rather, uh, your, your impure state, and removing the khabath, the impure, Substances is one of the requirements for prayer. Okay, so that means we always, always say that an impurity on your body does not require from you to make wudu if you're in the state of wudu. An impurity on your body requires from you to remove the impurity. So that means like if you have, like we said, you have, I don't know, uh, your child that uri urinates on your, your arm, for example, then you're not in need of wudu. You're in need of removing it. Which is, which is a difference. So we will come later on, not today, we will speak about what to do when you find out that you are wearing something which, which was touched by something impure. Or you are praying with your socks and then all of a sudden you see like, oh, I'm praying but actually I stepped into something which is impure. What do I do now? So that will, we will discuss later on, inshallah, but not now. So he says, um, فَوَقْتُ الظُّهْرِ مِنَ الزَّوَالِ إِلَى مُسَوَاتِ شَيْءِ فَيْأَهُ بَعْدَ فَيْءِ الزَّوَالِ So he says, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى He says the time for dhuhr. So why, why does he start with dhuhr? Because when Jibreel came to teach the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, at the prayer times, he started with dhuhr. So that's why he starts with dhuhr. But in many books you will see that they start with what? With fajr. They would start with Fajr and so forth. So he says the time for Dhuhr. Now for us it's very easy. We have our Muslim Pro or other apps that we use. Or we have the calendar of the mosque. We, we don't go by the sun anymore. But sometimes you have to. Like if you're standing on the side of the road because your car broke down for example. How are you going to calculate the time if your phone doesn't work? There is an estimate, right? You are going to say like, okay... Um, Dohr, uh, when I looked a week ago, Dohr was at 1, so we are now adding to it, so it must be 10 past 1, somewhere. So what are you going to do when you're in that, that state? They say when you are unable to find out what time it is, because you have no watch and you have nobody to ask, and you are not a connoisseur, you are not an expert in finding out prayer time by looking at the sun like the majority of people today. They, would, they, they just wouldn't know. Where is the sun with Dhuhr? Where is the sun with Asr? Should it be in front of me? Should it be behind me? 
is it dhuhr now? Is it asr now? Let me put a stick, <laughs> a stick in the what, in the soil, and now I will find out. So the majority of people will not know that. So how are you going to do this? They say by an estimation. Yani ala ghalabati dhun. Ghalabati dhun means that you are actually sure. We can't say one percent sure because one percent sure is only when you see it, right? But if you say dhuhr is around one somewhere 115 I know that when I pray at a quarter to two then I'm definitely in the time of Dhuhr then I'm not praying too early so now that is what you're going to do you are going to estimate the time and then you are going to pray and they say so it is better to wait longer as long as you are not fearful of praying outside of the required prayer time that is not what you're going to do so he says, and in the waqt of dhuhr, but and this is why I don't think it's very important to read this this part of the text because we may never, and we're not bare grills, are we? Where you are going to travel uh, through the desert and ultimate survival, boom, there is my stick. But we will read it just for the barakah of the text. He says, the time for dhuhr is from just after the zenith of the sun to when the shadow rep replicates the object in addition to its shadow and the zenith. So now what are we going to do? Now we are going to place a stick, this is not a stick of course, like as straight as you can, and a straight stick, not a crooked one. Now you are going to place it in an open space, and what are you going to do? You are going to draw the line. Now that, that the circle around the stick has the what? Has the length of the stick. Meaning that when there is shadow at a certain point, now, you will see that the shadow is as long as the stick or longer than the stick. No? Does that make sense? Okay. So you are going to place it like this. At a certain po point, there will be no shadow whatsoever. And then you have the first shadow showing that the sun has moved. So that first little tiny bit of shadow, we're not going to calculate. So what are we going to do we're, for Dhuhr? The Dhuhr time ends when the shadow is as long as the stick plus a little bit more for caution. Yes? And that's the little amount of shadow that we found at the very beginning when the stick was standing. Or the st stick is still standing. Now, he says here, now in addition to its shadow at the zenith, it is better to pray at its earliest time except during extreme heat. This applies if Doha prayer is prayed by oneself or in a congregation on an overcast day. So he says, Rahimullah Azawajal, yani when it is very hot, it's better to delay Dhuhr in the mosque. You should know that back in the days, like, they would travel, they would walk over boiling sand. You were wearing sandals. Believe me, if that boiling sand would get between, <laughs> between your sandal and your foot, you would feel it. it. It can become like 55, 60 degrees Celsius. I mean, you can literally burn your feet. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, Abridu, yani, wait until it, it gets colder for Dhuhr. And meaning that this is when it is extremely hot. We would say here in Europe, sometimes it can become very hot, but we have water everywhere, we're wearing shoes, we don't have this problem. So that is uh, not a problem then. And he says, and it is better to delay it a little bit when it, the, the weather is overcast or when... Um, when, when, for example, there, there is a lot of, are a lot of clouds and you cannot find out whether Dhuhr has already entered, yes or no, you are going to delay it. But the pro we don't have that problem because we have the calendars, right? But if you can't see, because the sun, there are so many clouds that you can't see the sun, so you can't know whether it's Dhuhr or Asr or not. So then he says, then it's by estimation. Then you're going to say like, okay, I don't know, let us wait a little bit, and then the call to prayer will be, uh, be, will be performed like that. <clears throat> so, in the times of heat, during ex extremely hot weather, weather in the summer, it is recommended that the prayer be delayed until such a time that the heat reduces. And that's what the Prophet said. Then he says, if the sky is overcast and there is a possibility of rain, or a sandstorm, it is best to delay the Dhuhr prayer. So what we could have done, when the storm was at its fiercest, we could have delayed it until the what? 
the, 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 the wind is a bit calmer. The problem is that we don't work with Adhan, so we have no, mean, no way of telling people. And that's why we keep the pray, prayer times. But our scholars would say that when the weather was, was that extreme, like with the storm Eunice, huh, that one would not be obliged to go to the mosque and one would have a valid excuse to stay at home. So there is no such a thing as being dramatic and theatrical and saying, I have to go to the mosque uh, because that's much better. No, at a certain point, the Prophet ﷺ, he would ask the Mu'addin yani, to say out loud during the Adhan, Sallu fi rihalikum aw buyutikum. And he play, pray at home. So that's okay. So the storm we had was definitely an excuse for not coming to the mosque. That would have been completely fine. Okay. So he says, if the sky is overcast and there is possibility of rain or a sandstorm, it is best to delay the Dhuhr prayer. It is permissible to pray Dhuhr at its latest time so that people can attend Dhuhr and stay on to complete the Asr prayer. Look at the ease in our deen. He says, when it is stormy, windy and rainy, then what the Imam is going to do? He's going to tell the people, come 10 minutes before Asr time, we pray. And then you pray your Dhuhr in Jama'ah you give salam, you wait two minutes and you pray asr. So you see how the fuqaha back in the days, they would facilitate these matters. Now today, it may very well be when an imam were to say this to people, that people say, who do you think you are? You are changing the deen, you are changing prayer times. It is usually people with, with the least knowledge that speak the most. That's why it's ajib. So if you are educated, you know that this is in our fiqh books, and it's, it's very logical, right? That's the mercy of our deen. So everybody has the ajr of praying in jama'ah, in congregation, and pray the two prayers, and they didn't have to go back and forth. So that is what we are allowed to do in our deen, al-azim. Then he says, وَيَلِيهِ وَقْتُ الْعَصْرِ So the waqt al-dhuhr, now, he says here, Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, yani, and this is followed by Asr time, which extends until the shadow is twice the size of the object. Nah? So now, Dhuhr, until one. So now we're going to add one, and we can do that circle once again, right? And then you see what now? Okay, if it's twice the size plus the extra, the little extra shadow, then what? Then it is Asr. So now he says, Rahimullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani the, the, then Asr is. Uh, and uh, the, he says, in difficult times, Asr can be prayed until sunset. Now, meaning that's the, a bad time to pray. Of course, not until the sun sets, until right before sunset. But this is a disrecommended time. This is. Uh, disliked because the Prophet Muhammad said Tilka salatun munafiq. this is the salah of the munafiq now he waits until the sun almost sets and then he prays and the Prophet said that we are not allowed to pray after Fajr and also that period right before Maghrib because that is the time where the sun sets and rises between the horns of shaitan uh, figuratively speaking but literally, it is what? It is a time where the Satan worshippers and the sun worshippers worship the sun. No? So the Asr time would then be from the moment that something is what? One. And goes until the, it is double and a little bit. And that is that time where you should be praying. Okay? Unless in waqt al-darura. Darura can be many things. You need to get your child from the nursery. And there is no other way than to get your child at that time. So you know I will come back home and most likely pray Asr five minutes before Maghrib. And that would be the only time, for example, then you are allowed to do that as long as you don't pray after the time. Because that would be haram. No. There's a hadith that says, إِلَىٰ إِخْمِرَارِ shams. Yes. So that's the latest that you can do Asr. Yes, we, we, we will speak about this, inshallah. No. <clears throat> then, وَيَلِيهِ وَقْتُ الْمَغْرِبِ إِلَى مَغِيبِ الْحُمْرَةِ 
No? He says, followed by the Maghrib prayer, which begins from sunset until the red afterglow of the setting sun disappears. So Maghrib stops the moment that you don't see any glow anymore. Now the scholars, they differ among them. The thing is that the, the Maghrib time is very short. Like we see on the calendars from this time to that time. But in reality, the scholars I've sat with, they spoke about like, you should pray within the 45 minutes after Maghrib. You should literally try to pray 45 minutes, 60 minutes done. The ulama of Turkey, yani the, the, the Ahnaf, they are of the opinion that it's never more than one hour and 20 minutes. Um, and that's why all year long they have one hour and 20 minutes Isha after Maghrib. Uh, that, that is what they have. So now, just to, just to share this with you, I'm not saying you should go by this, but what we know is that the Prophet ﷺ, and he made it very clear that Maghrib is to be prayed immediately. There is no delay. In, in Fajr, Asr, uh, Maghrib, uh, sorry, in Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha, we have a very large time. Maghrib not. So don't wait for your Maghrib until what? Until the time you, you, you have now. That would be, that would be really incorrect. Okay. So he said, it is the Sunnah to hasten the prayer unless he has the intention of being a Muharim on the night of Jama'ah. Yeah, even when you're on Hajj, there are other rules. Then he says, وَيَلِيهِ وَقْتُ الْإِشَاءِ إِلَى الْفَجْرِ الثَّانِي وَهُوَ الْبَيَادُ الْمُعْتَرَضِي وَتَأْخِيرُهَا إِلَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ أَفْضَلُ إِنْ سَهُلُ he says that follows the Isha prayer and its time is until the second Fajr. Yani the second Fajr. Do you have a piece of paper? No? Okay, I'm going to do it like this. It's okay. So we have, Barakallahu Fikum, this is the sun disk. Okay? So when the sun disk is here, it's not, you don't see it, right? You see nothing. So when the sun disk is at the horizon but not past the horizon, you will see light. That light is not the light of the sun disk. It's the light of the sun rays. Meaning that the sun has not set yet. Are you with me? So when the sun is here, and this is what we call the Fajr al kadib The Fajr al kadib meaning, why do they say the, well, let's say the Optical illusion Fajr. No? So because, but he says, when that light is seen, it is not horizontal, it is a vertical light. It's a vertical light, it goes upwards. So you see that, and people see this, and they're traveling, they say, oh, it's Fajr. No, it isn't. Fajr starts when the disk of the sun, now you see it, right? The disk of the sun comes above the horizon, the sun disk, then the light will be horizontal. And that is where the true Fajr time enters. So if someone prays with the Fajr al-Kadib, then you are too early and your prayer is invalid. So you need to pray with the Fajr al-Sadiq. And this is why in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, we had two adhans. They say that after the Fajr al-Kadib, some fuqaha say that there is still a very obscure, dark moment. So you have the light, then comes obscurity again, and then you have the sun rising. So that's what he says. He says, Yani, then, the fo then follows the Isha prayer, and its time is until the second Fajr. Meaning until before the second Fajr, right? Not, uh, not when the sun rises. So in the, the, according to Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad, rahmatullahi alayhi, yani one is allowed to pray Isha until Fajr. Now, so that would be the time of Isha. But he says the best time to pray it is at the last third of the first third of the night. So let us say that, you, to make it easy, Isha 6, Fajr 6, that's 12 hours, right? We divide it in three. That's four hours each. So that 6 plus 4 is what? 10. Ten. Mm -hmm. So now the last third of between 6 and 10. That is the best time to pray Fajr. I should have taken nine hours, would be easier, no? <laughs> because now, <laughs> you understand what I mean? So three, 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 nine, okay. So, Isha 12, Fajr nine, <laughs> it doesn't exist, right? So 12, nine. So now we divide it in three. 
that's three hours each. So that would be from nine to six. No, nine to you're going backwards. Yeah, twenty. Nine to twelve, right? Nine to twelve. Which moment would be the last third from eleven to twelve? That would then be the ideal time to pray Isha. No? So if you have a night, you divide it in three, and the last third of the first third now is the ideal moment where the Prophet ﷺ said, try to delay it until the last third of the first third of the night. Is it the last huh? time? Is it the last? No, it's the best time to ah. pray. It's the best time to pray. It's not, like we said, the time of Isha goes according to the Hanabila. Now, goes to what? Goes until the Fajr. The Fajr is Sadiq. No? But it's not the recommended time. No? The recommended time is what? The last third of the first third of the night. That is recommended if the Imam prays like that at the mosque or when you pray at home alone. But if the Imam does not pray at that moment, then the best time for you to pray is in the mosque with the Imam. No? Because that gets more agile than praying at the last third of the first third of the night. ماشي ويليه وقت الفجر إلى طلوع الشمس وتعجيبها أفضل followed by the fajr prayer which lasts until sunrise what is sunrise sunrise is when the entire disk sun disk is above the horizon so this is the moment where we go okay it's fajr fajr has started it continues 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 fajr has ended um, now fajr has stopped and now the sun will go up here it is Dohr, right? Then at a certain moment it's Asr. And then we come in a time where it is discouraged to pray Asr. And then what? The moment the sun starts setting, disappearing, it's Maghrib. And that's why with Maghrib, you still have light. Now, the Prophet said, and if the night disappear, arise from that side, and the day disappears from that side, then فَقَدْ أَفْطَرَ الصَّائِمِ And the, the fasting person has broken his fast. Meaning that even if you were not to eat, you're not in a state of fasting. Because the time for fasting has disappeared, so also you're fasting. So some people, they want to be very pious and say, no, no, I'm going to train myself. I'm not breaking my fast until Isha. Ya Habibi. You're just tormenting yourself, your fast has ended. It's even a sunnah to break your fast with your niyyah if you find nothing to eat. That you, that you have the niyyah that you break your fast. If you find no date, no water, in order to be in line with the sunnah of Rasulullah who said that my ummah will be fine for as long as they break their fast quickly and for as long as they eat late. Now, but we are going to start next week, inshallah, with Ramadan as a preparation. We are going over the fiqh of Ramadan with all the details that you can imagine, inshallah, from i'tikaf to taraweeh, from eating, from making mistakes during Ramadan. All of that we are going to cover in five classes. Uh, we're not going to continue with prayer, so that's from next week, inshallah. So he says, So the moment that, that the sun has risen now, it's not yet shuruq, it's not yet duha prayer. Duha prayer is when the sun rises a bit more until the light of the sun is seen on the roofs, the top of the roofs. So when you have buildings and you see the light of the sun shining on the buildings, that's usually when the building is a bit orange-like. You know, it's, it's not day, you see that it, it's an orange glow. That's the time where you are allowed now to pray your shuruq prayer or your duha prayer the way you want it. That can be two, four, six, eight. Yani uh, raka'at, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it's the salatul awabin, the, the salah of those who submit themselves to Allah. And the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam said if someone prays fajr and stays seated in his place, doesn't go back to bed, continues with dhikr or Quran, whatever, and then prays two raka'at, now he has the, the ajr of Hajj and Umrah tam tam. The, 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 the reward of Hajj and Umrah that are accepted. But of course, it doesn't replace the Hajj and Umrah. Like somebody says, Akhi, did you do, uh, yani, did you do your Hajj, hajj al-Islam? Uh, brother, I do it every morning. I'm happy with that. No, no. 
It doesn't work like that. Like some people say, Surah Al-Ikhlas is a third of the Qur'an. <laughs> I read Surah Al-Ikhlas three times, it's like I read the entire Qur'an. It doesn't work like that, right? Okay? So this is the same thing. So, he says, وَتَعْجِيلُهَا أَفْضَلُ yani, And it is better to hasten the Fajr prayer. As the Prophet ﷺ used to perform Fajr in the dark of the night, like we see uh, in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And we also find that the Sahaba or the Sahabiyat عنه, they would pray in the mosque with the men, some of them, not all of them. And they say when we prayed, we would, not, not, we would be unrecognizable. And they say when we would pray Fajr, we would not know who prays be next to us unless he would speak to us. We would recognize the voice. So meaning that it was still very dark. Of course, we have other narrations where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and Abu Bakr عنه, he would delay his Fajr prayer until the, the yellow glow. So you see that the scholars have differed, but the strongest opinion in all of them seems to be that the Sunnah is to pray Fajr Yani, as quickly as you can after the, the prayer time having entered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Allah. And then, وَتُدْرَكُ الصَّلَاةُ بِتَكْبِيرَةِ الْإِحْرَامِ فِي وَقْتِهَا وَلَا يُصَلِّي قَبْلَ غَلَبَةِ ظَنِّهِ بِدُخُولِ وَقْتِهَا إِمَّا بِاجْتِهَادٍ أَوْ خَبَرٍ مُتَيَقٍ فَإِنْ أَحْرَمَ بِاجْتِهَادٍ فَبَانَ قَبْلَهُ فَنَفْلٌ وَإِلَّا فَفَرْضٍ so he says, Yani, if you prayed one raka'ah, complete raka'ah time. Now the scholars, they differ, what is the raka'ah? Some say, raka'ah huwa ruku'ah. Now some say, the raka'ah is the ruku'ah. Why? Because when you enter into the salah and you do the ruku'ah with the imam, then it is like you have, Yani, what? It is like you have prayed that raka'ah with the imam. But they say, this is another other issue. This is the issue of praying on time. It is not an issue of being considered to be having prayed on time with the Imam to as a as a as a ma'mum. Is the difference clear? So you can't do qiyas here. The qiyas here is about praying on in the prayer time. Now, and the other one is praying con, whether you are considered to have prayed the rakah with the Imam. And this is why we see. Uh, you have to switch it up. Uh, yeah, uh, switch okay. it on uh, upstairs. Ah, uh, okay. So do you understand the difference? So this is why they say, why the scholars differ. And they say, هَلْ الرَّكَعَ نَمْ هِيَ الرُّكُوعَ أَمْ الرَّكَعَ هِيَ الرَّكَعَةُ الْكَامِلَةُ So some say, if you have takbirat al-ihram في الوقت, then that is sufficient. And in the madhab here, they say, يعني وَتُدْرَكُ الصَّلَاةُ بِتَكْبِرَةِ الْإِحْرَامِ فِي وَقْتِهَا If you do your takbirat al-ihram on time, then your prayer is considered to be on time. And they say because the, the hadith of Rasulullah literally shows yani, man adraka raka'atan faqad adraka salah. And they say this is not only connected now to the prayer with the Imam, la man adraka min al salati shay'an fi waqtiha wa shay'u yutlaku ala juz is sagir. So meaning the smallest part is takbirat al ihram. So that, that's important. So he says, وَتُدْرَكُ الصَّلَاةِ بِتَكْبِيرَةِ الْإِحْرَامِ فِي وَقْتِهَا وَلَا يُصَلِّي قَبْلَ غَلَبَةِ ظَنِّهِ Do you know the text we are reading? The, 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 the small students of knowledge, the children, they would memorize this. This is one of the basic texts in the madhab that people would just memorize. So he says, وَلَا يُصَلِّي قَبْلَ غَلَبَةِ ظَنِّهِ بِدُخُولِ وَقْتِهَا Now he says, and he should not pray until he is convinced that the prayer time has begun. We said before that if you pray without trying to find out whether the prayer time has entered, that even if you pray on time, your prayer is not correct. Because you were doubtful while you were doing takbirat al-ihram. وَلْيَقِينُ بِدُخُولِ الْوَقْتِ مِنْ شُرُوطِ صَلَاةِ So being sure of the prayer time having entered is one of the conditions of, of what? Of your prayer. And then he says, Rahimallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can do this by either making an informed judgment or if he is advised by a trustworthy person who is certain that prayer time has commenced. So if you ask somebody, has prayer time started? And he says yes. And he's trustworthy. What do we mean trustworthy? You don't know him as a liar and you know him as somebody who prays. Even if somebody is trustworthy but doesn't pray, you are not allowed to go by his answer. Why? Be because he has no amana. 
with regards to prayer. Nabi is not trustworthy with regards to prayer. So you should ask somebody who knows. And who are the ones who know? Yeah, the ones who usually pray on time or the ones who pray. So he says by asking a trustworthy person, but if you ask someone who has done ijtihad himself, because he has no watch, no phone, and he said, when I left uh, work, it was 12.30, it was about 15 minutes home on my bike, like always, so it's now 12.45, so yes, it's Dohr. So he did watch his watch, and he didn't watch his phone, so he did ijtihad. Now, when he gives you the answer, you are not allowed to do taqlid of him. When you now follow him, you are not allowed. Your prayer will be invalid. Why? Because you are not, you are required to do your own ijtihad if you don't have the means. So you can't do ijtihad based on someone's ijtihad. Fi dukhulil waqt. This, of course, is in strange situations. You are somewhere in Iraq driving a car and you, you don't have a watch or you're, you don't have Wi-Fi, whatever, you're in Morocco, Spain, somewhere in the mountains, whatever, and then, then you should do your ijtihad, okay? If you do your it, and then he says, if he made takbirat al-ihram after being convinced that prayer time is due and realizes that he had preceded the time, he should consider it an optional prayer and proceed to pray the obligatory prayer once more. So if you find out that you pray too early, it's not in vain. Your prayer now will be considered to be a sunnah prayer. Uh, to be a sunnah prayer. And you have to pray now your, your fast prayer. So what you need to know is we can all, always go from a strong prayer to a weaker prayer. We said that last time, right? But never from a weaker prayer to a strong prayer. And that's why some people would say, if you make uh, just wudu with the intention of doing dhikr, you... To, being in a state of dhikr for uh, wudu, for doing dhikr, is not obligatory. I can do dhikr without wudu. But now I say, no, it's better. And it's true. Whatever worship you do, it's better with what? To be in a state of wudu. So I go and make wudu with the intention of what? With the intention of doing dhikr. They say, this wudu cannot be used for what? For salah. Why? Because the wudu for salah is obligatory. And you made the intention to what? to make a wudu for something which is not obligatory, so you cannot use that. So they say, الأفضل أن تكون نيتك مطلقة يعني لا, تقيد, لا تقيدها Now, the, the best thing is that your, your niya is unrestricted. You say, this is لإباحة كل ما يحتاج إلى الوضوء And this is a, an ablution that I perform to make everything for which a wudu is required permissible to do. خلاص. So anyway. Then he says, فَإِنْ أَحْرَمَ بِجْتِهَادٍ فَبَانَ قَبْلَهُ فَنَفْلٌ وَإِلَّا فَفَرَّتْ So, uh, and if he, it appears that he prayed on time, now after doing ijtihad, then he doesn't have to pray again. But if he didn't do ijtihad, and even he was on time, he has to pray again. Even if he prayed on time. Okay? And then he says, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَإِنْ أَدْرَكَ مُكَلَّفٌ مِنْ وَقْتِهَا قَدْرَ التَّحْرِيمَ ثُمَّ زَالَ تَكْلِيفُهُ أَوْ حَاضَتْ ثُمَّ كُلِّفَ وَطَهُرَتْ قَضَوْهَا وَمَنْ صَارَ أَهْلَ لِوُجُوبِهَا قَبْلَ خُرُوجِ وَقْتِهَا لَزِمَتْهُ وَمَا يَجْمَعُ إِلَيْهَا قَبْلَهَا Subhanallah. So this is an important one. He says, and if the mukallaf, يعني المكلف هو الذي كلفه الله وهو المخاطب المدرك البالغ المسلم الحر يعني في أغلبي and the mukallaf is the one who has been given a responsibility by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something. So in this case, it, it is the mukallaf, the one who is addressed by the sharia to pray. He says, and if the mukallaf, one on whom prayer is obligatory, is able to make the takbirat al-ihram as the prayer time arrived, but the obligation is removed, or the female begins to menstruate, then he becomes obliged to do so again or her menses stops. Or when her, yani, if she now does takbirat al-ihram, she's still on time. And the moment she is in prayer, now her menstruation starts. That can always happen. She has to pray that prayer again when her, her menstruation stops. Because she was mukhatab and she was in prayer. 
So that prayer, the moment she did takbir, there was no menstruation, meaning that she was still mukallafa. She was still, and Allah still wanted her to pray at that particular moment. And that's when there is takbiratul ihram. Only takbiratul ihram fil waqt. No? But anyway, so now he says, Rahimallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, um, Whosoever is obliged to pray before the prayer time lapses must do so by combining it with the earlier prayer. Uh, so he says, if somebody becomes bad, yani a boy becomes, uh, yani enters into puberty by, by e e either by, by uh, hair growth or by the voice changing or by an erotic dream or whatever it may be. There are many means uh, by which one can define whether uh, a boy enters into what? In, into puberty. Now, if that happens in the time of Asr, if that happens in the time of Asr, then according to the Madhab, he is obliged to pray Asr wa ma yujma al Asr biha. Yani, and that with which Asr is combined, meaning Dhuhr. Because the time of necessity of Dhuhr goes until the end of Asr, when people do Jama'ah of Salah. So they say he now is required to pray these two prayers. Or if he uh, becomes an adult in the time of Isha, he will do what? He will join Maghrib with it. Khalas? With Fajr, nothing. So if he now becomes Balik with Fajr, and he, he only prays Fajr. If he becomes Balik after sunrise, he has no prayer. Then he just starts with Dhuhr. So he doesn't have to make up Fajr. But if he becomes a Muslim before the sun disk now has completely risen above the horizon, then he is still mukhatab and mukallaf. Now then he has to pray that prayer, even if he were to pray too late. Like we say, yani, okay, you, it's in, oh, I didn't know. You say, khalas, you have to pray. So he has to pray that prayer. Allah. وَيَجِبُ فَوْرًا قَضَاءُ الْفَوَائِدِ مُرَتَّبًا ويسقط الترتيب بنسيانه وبخشة خروج وقت اختيار الحاضرة ووقت الاختيار يكون في صلاتين فقط صلاة العصر وصلاة العشاء. He says making a prayer should be done instantly and in sequence. Now, so what a lot of people do, for example, I didn't pray Maghrib, I entered the mosque to pray Isha, and now what I do, I pray Isha. But why? Because Isha time didn't elapse, right? So why are you now not only praying too late, you are also changing the prayer sequence. So you are going to pray your, your, your Maghrib and then you are go going to pray your Isha. But now we have a problem. That is when you haven't um, prayed your Dhuhr and now you remember that you have to pray Asr. But now if you pray Dhuhr first, you will miss Asr. Here they say you pray Asr. Why? Because otherwise you have two prayers that will be outside of their prayer time. Now the scholars is different then. They say you pray Asr first and then you make up your Dhuhr and you pray Asr again. Because of ihtiram at tartib Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made clear, inna salata kanat al mu'minina kitaban mawquta. Yani that the prayer times are prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at particular and specific times. Not only the prayer times, but also the sequence of the prayers. Because otherwise we are not just only changing the prayer time, we are also changing the order of the prayers, which would not be allowed then. Does that make sense? Okay? So he says, So also when, for example, somebody has to make up three prayers, then you are going to make them up. Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, in sequence. They say, وَيَسْقُطُ التَّرْتِيبِ بِأَكْثَرَ مِنْ خَمْسِ yani If you have to make up more than five prayers, there is no tartib. Why? Because the five pray prayers, they are like wihda muwahada. Now they are like one whole. Now we have 24 hours, five prayers have to be done therein. So if you have more than five prayers that you need to make up, you can make them up regardless of the order you do it in. But once you come to the five prayers, they need to be prayed again. In, in, in sequence. Now, the majority of the scholars, now they are of the opinion that making up all your prayers, even your past prayers, is obligatory. Now, 
is obligatory. We have Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said it is sufficient for one to make a lot of istighfar and to pray a lot of nawafir, yani a lot of extra prayers. The reason why is because the strongest opinion uh, among the Hanabila is that he who does not pray deliberately is a kafir. Meaning that if you are a kafir, you are not mukhatab. Meaning you, you, you are not praying. So if you now start praying again, that is your tawbah from kufr. So that you don't have to make up these prayers because when you were not praying, you were outside of Islam. Uh, that is one of the opinions. And the Hanabila scholars have respected that opinion. But it's not the, 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 the mu'atamat of the madhab. madhab. It is not the, the strongest opinion within the madhab. So one has to make up his prayers. Uh, why would one make uh, extra, a lot of extra prayers when you still didn't pay your debt? It's like you inviting somebody, you, you, you owe him 5,000 pounds, but you keep on giving him presents. He said, I don't want presents, I just want my 5,000 pounds. You say, yeah, but I prefer to give you presents. Of course, we don't give Allah Jalla presents. So we have to make it up. Meaning, even if you didn't pray for 10 years, you have to make it up. So our sc the scholar said that if you have prayers to make up, the only non-obligatory prayers you're going to pray is Witr and the Sunnah Qabl al-Fajr. Witr and Sunnah Qabl al-Fajr. All the Sunnah prayers you are praying, turn them into what? Into Fart prayers. Nam? So that you are paying back and you pray no Fart, you pray no Sunnah apart from that. That is the opinion of the Fuqaha. So, um, and that is what, what we go by, inshallah. Are there any questions about this? If you don't know, you say like, was it 20 years? Was it 21 years? Then you go for 21 and a half. They say, ala ghalab yani Until one is 100% sure that he's not missing out prayers. Okay? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Laynullahi haq. Yani the, 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 the debt you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets priority over other debts to be paid off. Uh, um, yeah, that's it. Any questions about this? Yes. Um, the question about the Islamic prayer time. Uh, yes. You mentioned that now we have applications. Yes. It's easy to follow. But I've noticed that there's major differences in between those applications and Islamic calendars, especially in the UK. So if you live in Scotland and if you live in London, um, but there are differences between like, London and Scotland. No, yeah, but even in a in a in, in a city, in yes. London, there are different posts that pray on different times. So yes. there's one hour difference between. Those yes, prayers. but the, these prayers, Barakallahu Fikum, these prayer times are the times where the mosques pray, but not always the time where they say that Dhuhr enters. Like here, we have a calendar, for example. Yeah. It says Dhuhr time, Jama'a time, but there is a difference between the Ahnaf and the others which is the, the Hanafi calculation, which is like sometimes even 45 minutes, 35 minutes later than the, uh, it's only in Dhuhr, than the other Madahib. Well, the issue is in Ramadan. Uh, 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 the issue is in Ramadan.